Hello, and welcome to The Forge. I'm the Artsmith, and today, after months of hard work, I have finally found time to return from the kiln. With the relaxation that comes from the winter break, I think it's only right to work on some more Fakemon. I know it's been a while since the last one of these videos, but I hope that the videos that I have been putting out in the meantime were able to keep you sated. This has been a year of improvement for me. My storyboards are looking so much better than they did last year, I've had a blast making tarot cards, and I've slowly been putting together the pieces I need in order to make my own original series, The Last Fire Sprite, a reality. But enough of all that. You came here for some Fakemon. First of all, if this is your first time at the Forge, I highly recommend checking out my Fakemon playlist after you're done watching this video. To catch you up to speed, I'm making a Fakemon region based on the West Coast USA, where prehistoric Fakemon can be fully restored. If you're subscribed to the channel, you'd know that I've been working on today's Fakemon for some time. Essentially, I wanted to make my region's Eevee. That is, a Fakemon that can evolve into multiple different evolutions based on type. Where Eevee's evolutions cover nine types, I wanted mine to cover the remaining. That is, fighting, flying, rock, ground, steel, ghost, bug, and poison. Today, I'll be designing the first three, which just so happens to form a perfect type triangle. The conceptual phase for this line of Fakemon was kind of hectic. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the base animal I wanted to apply these evolutionary changes to. I considered an Ankylosaur, a Ceratopsian, and even a dragon. I really tried to make the dragon work. But something just wasn't feeling right about it. Eevee and its evolutions benefit from a similar body shape shared amongst them, and I wanted to achieve that kind of effect. Only, it's really difficult to make a dragon body that can be universal like that. It got to a point where I had to ask myself, why am I trying to make this dragon work so much? It's a prehistoric region after all. But what dinosaur fits the bill in my eyes? I sketched out various dinosaur body types and one stood out to me above all the others. In the end, I chose a sauropod to be my multi-evolution wizard. I wanted this fake mod to be adorable, dependable. They needed to look like a buddy. And well, no other dinosaur is as friend-shaped as sauropods, in my opinion. Despite that, I initially had trouble nailing this design. I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted it to be besides a buddy. I tried implementing DNA somehow into its design, anything to make it look really distinct. However, I eventually decided that simplicity was the key with this design. I ended up channeling my childhood toys into the final design. I had this Brachiosaurus toy named Blue. It was my comfort toy, my buddy. And that's exactly what this Fakemon needed to evoke. Simple as that. Now, if Eevee is the evolution Pokemon, I wanted the theme for Sora to be adaptation and lifestyle. It adapts to its environment, creating evolutionary forms that are very popular amongst trainers. It can fit into any lifestyle depending on which evolution you choose, much like how there are different breeds of dogs best suited for certain lifestyles. I went with this purplish-blue color palette to make it very clear just through color alone that it's a dragon type, and I make sure to keep it up with the other designs. I think this little guy is just adorable. What do you think? Does Sora give off the vibes of a Pokemon with endless potential? Sora, the adaptation Pokemon. When restoring this ancient Pokemon, scientists had to add a variety of genes to its fragmented DNA in order to stabilize it. This has unexpectedly resulted in a Pokemon capable of adapting to any environment. This has made it a very popular companion for trainers as it can adapt to their lifestyle. It is unknown how many forms it can take. However, there are three common variants. First up, let's design Sora's fighting type evolution. It was among the first that I envisioned for the Sora line, and honestly, perhaps the simplest design-wise. What does it look like when Sora needs to adapt to a hostile environment? Well, it'd be all scratched up, and maybe it grew some spikes to defend itself. I based this evolution on the Bahadadasaurus. Did I say that right? Which had these spikes jutting out of its neck. I like the idea that it also adopted traits of its predators to scare them off, like with its stripes. 
And of course, I had to give it a club tail. I go back and forth on it, but you'll see it return. I also wanted to have it posed on its hind legs to emphasize that it's ready to slam its claws down on anything unlucky enough to be beneath them. Coloring this one was interesting. The fighting type logo uses almost a rust brown, and finding a way to represent that in this design was both simple and difficult. I really like where the design ended up. It looks like this battle-hardened dino ready to fight for its trainer. Gladiosaur, the combatant Pokemon. When Sora is exposed to a harsh environment where it has to fight constantly to survive, it evolves into Gladiosaur. The innocence it once had is gone, replaced with an edge necessary to survive. This Pokemon is best suited for trainers heavily involved in battling, and should be exercised daily. That is, if you can find a gym advanced enough to keep up with its ferocity. I had a very strong vision for the flying type evolution for Sora, and couldn't wait to draw it. How would Sora adapt to an airy environment? Well, obviously I can't give it giant wings. That just wouldn't look right. How about feathers? Scientists suspect that sauropods must have had some feathers, at least sparse like an elephant's hair. Let's take that and turn it up to 11. You guys know just how much I like to make my reptiles fluffy. This Fakemon has spent so much time in windy conditions that it can channel its power through its feathers. One mighty swing of its tail can start a whirlwind. I think there are plenty of flying types that don't have wings, so I think it fits. Its colors came to me very quickly. What better to accent sky blue than magenta? Pumasaur, the Zephyr Pokemon. When Sora is exposed to an exceptionally windy environment, it evolves into Plumasaur. It embraces the freedom of the morning breeze and channels it through its quills to deliver devastating damage. This Pokemon is best suited for trainers that spend their time at high altitudes. Should someone ever fall, it loves to provide a cushion for them to land on. All three of these designs have more than made up for the months of conceptual hell this line put me through, because every single one of them were so easy for me to execute. I knew exactly what I wanted them all to look like, especially the rock-type evolution. I wanted a stone dinosaur with stellar crystals jutting out of it, leaving it ambiguous whether they're simply growing on its skin or growing out from within their body, as if some, like, giant geode. This Fakemon comes to be when Sora needs to adapt to an underground environment, so it literally becomes part of the cave. I love the imagery of a player wandering through a cave and seeing these giant crystal structures, only to discover that they're actually Pokemon. It also glows in the dark because, again, the visuals would be pretty cool. My rendering definitely saved this design in the end, and I just have so much fun getting crystal structures to shine. I chose a simple light blue crystal to represent this Fakemon. I think it pops well against the muted colors on its body. Stellasaur, the stalagmite Pokemon. When Sora grows up in dense underground caves, it evolves into Stellasaur. It has learned how to become one with the crystal formations that surround it, enabling it to traverse its environment much easier. This Pokemon is best suited for trainers that enjoy spelunking and spending their time in dark places. Some say that Stellasaur's crystals glow in complete darkness. So that does it for my multi-evolution Fakemon for the time being. We have our little buddy just brimming with potential and three of the forms it can take. I think it's good to stop there for the time being. Maybe I'll get to the other five at a later date if this video does well enough. I've already got ideas brimming. But what do you think? Would you add Sora to your team? Which evolution is your favorite so far? I've got a couple more videos in the works right now, so keep an eye out for those when they eventually get posted. In the meantime, it would really help out if you subscribe to the channel. Be sure to recommend any dinosaurs or other extinct creatures you would like to see adapted into Fakemon. And if you want, throw in some type combos you think would be cool too. Make sure to go watch my other Fakemon videos if you haven't yet. And check out my tarot card series too. 
I've got more cards finished, I just need to get around to putting them into a video. This has been The Artsmith, and thank you for coming back to The Forge. See you next year!